What's going on, YouTube? It seems like just a year ago, the only company really doing electric vehicles was Tesla, but the times are changing rapidly. We now have compelling and competitive products starting to appear from legacy automakers, and two of the biggest are undoubtedly this Ford Mustang Mach-E and the Hyundai Ioniq 5. These two have big ranges, state-of-the-art technologies, and fairly mainstream price tags. But the question is, which of these two Tesla alternatives is the best electric family crossover for you? Let's go ahead and find out. So like always, a good place to start is by establishing things with the pricing and equipment levels. So beginning with the new Ionic 5, which is just now arriving in the US, pricing begins at $39,700. We however have the fully loaded limited model, with the more powerful dual motor all-wheel drive system and that carries a price tag of $55,725 after destination. Moving to the Mustang Mach-E, it has a very similar structure, though pricing has risen a decent amount for its second model year. For this comparison, we have the premium trim with all-wheel drive, but unlike the Hyundai, the larger battery pack is not included on this trim and costs an additional $6,000. After destination, its total price is $59,140. Now it's important to remember that both of these are the MSRPs, meaning that we haven't factored in any federal tax rebates. Towards the end of the comparison in the value section, we will account for the price difference and talk about important information regarding the $7,500 federal EV tax credit. But let's get things going here with the exteriors, where both have futuristic and exciting designs to say the least. Now whether or not you agree with the Mustang name being applied to this Mach-E, you will still find many Mustang design cues, from the pony badge up front, the grille outline, and the slender LED headlights. The Ionic 5 on the other hand doesn't take any design cues from existing Hyundais, with a look that is simultaneously futuristic and also retro especially with the pixel-themed LED headlights. Neither have fog lamps, but one thing that's cool about the Ford's headlights is that they have dynamic turn signals. Heading around to the sides, neither of them have traditional crossover shapes. The Mach-E goes for a real smooth and sleek design that tapers off towards the rear, while the Ionic has a ton of sharp and angular shapes. Both of them are pretty low to the ground, an effect that's amplified by the Ionic's 1 inch larger alloy wheels, 20 inches versus 19. For these comparisons, we don't award points for our personal preferences in design, since people will feel differently about that. But I will say that both of them are very eye-catching and certainly stand out from traditional gas offerings on the road. One small detail to point out is the lack of a rear wiper on the Ionic. Now checking out some of the individual features. Both of their mirrors have heating, power folding, and blind spot monitoring systems. And as you'd pretty much expect, tons of other safety systems are also thrown in for both of them. Among them are forward emergency braking with pedestrian detection, adaptive cruise control with stop and go, lane keeping assist, rear auto braking, and auto high beam headlights. An important distinction, however, is that the Mach-E includes Ford's new Blue Cruise system which is a level 2 semi-autonomous driving system that allows for hands-free driving on 100,000 miles of highways in the US. The Ionic also has a highway assist system, but it's less sophisticated and requires hands on the steering wheel to operate. We also need to talk about warranties. While they are structured differently from each other in some ways, the Hyundai definitely has a longer bumper-to-bumper -bumper warranty, and it also offers 3 years of complimentary maintenance. And finally, finishing up the exterior section, the Hyundai is rated to tow up to 2,000 pounds, while the Mustang is not rated to tow at all. But of course you'll spend a lot more time in the interior than you will admiring the exteriors, so let's get to that. Just getting inside the vehicles is interesting since both of them have the ability to use your phone as the key. They also give you traditional fobs as well, but the real fun is the door handles. On the Mach-E, there is almost no door handle, so you push the little button to open. The Hyundai ejects the door handles automatically as you approach it. 
Once you actually open the doors up, you can immediately tell that the interiors have futuristic and minimalistic designs. Starting with the seats themselves, they both offer comfortable and soft leatherette seats with eight ways of adjustment, memory, and heating. The Hyundai has some advantages though, since only its seats are ventilated, and its driver's seat has a special full reclining mode for taking a great nap while charging. Once fully inside the cabins, we can begin to inspect the material quality. Both do a great job with fit and finish, and they both also have pretty nice cabins made with sustainable materials. Overall, though the Mustang does look like the more upscale interior, there really isn't a meaningful enough difference in materials to warrant a point. Unlike Tesla, both these two have dedicated gauge clusters in front of the drivers, in addition to the main displays. The Ford's is 10.2 inches and the Hyundai's is about 2 inches larger, both with special graphics. On the Ionic 5, you also have a blind spot camera system and their brand new AR head-up display, neither of which are options on the Mustang. Coming back to the steering wheels, both have nice manual adjusting leather wrap steering wheels with heating. But now let's start to dig into the very important aspect of interior storage, where both are very impressive. Being EVs, the simpler powertrain allows for tons of empty space. And I'd honestly say that they are just about equal once you look past the fact that the Hyundai's is exposed and the Ford's is mostly contained in sections. They both also have wireless phone charging pads, but only the Ionix console can slide forward and back, and only the Ford's has USB Type-C ports. Moving to the shifters, I'm sure you didn't expect them to be normal, and they aren't. Both are electronic, and when in reverse, both of them have 360 degree camera systems, but only the Ionic has the special 3D view. But now let's jump into the elephant of the interiors, which are the massive displays. In the Ford, a lot of the controls are inside of the display, whereas the Hyundai keeps things like climate and audio separate. And let's talk about those two things first. Both have dual zone automatic climate controls, and for audio systems, we have Bang & Olsen and Bose, which we will sample right now. Overall, as you'd expect for a vehicle using a sound bar across the entire dash, the Mustang Mach-E does have the superior sound quality. Additionally, the volume knob built into the display is a super cool touch. But now let's start to dwell into the infotainment systems themselves. On the Mustang Mach-E, we have a 15.5 inch portrait oriented screen, compared to a 12.3 inch landscape display on the Ionic. Both of them have beautiful graphics and resolution, with plenty of special touches for the electric systems. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are included, but only the Ford runs them wirelessly. And finally, to wrap up the front of the interiors, both of them have auto dimming mirrors with home link, and giant one piece panoramic sunroofs that do not open. Now heading around to the rear seats, this will be a very important area for those of you using them as family vehicles. Speaking dimensionally first, both have tons of headroom and generous legroom within 5% of each other. Moving next to the features, both have vents and two USB ports, but only the Hyundai also has rear sunshades. Heading to the cargo areas, they both have power tailgates with hands-free opening. And once they pop open, you'll find almost exactly the same maximum cargo capacity at nearly 60 cubic feet. 
but the Ford does give you about 8% more space when the seats are upright. Furthermore, the Mustang has a significantly larger frunk that can also be used as a drainable cooler. But as you can see, this is still a very tight race. So now let's take them out for a spin and see who's going to come out on top. Alright, so let's dig into some of the most important details about owning an electric vehicle, starting with the range, battery, and performance. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, both have all-wheel drive and the larger battery packs, giving 256 miles of range for the Hyundai and a little over 5% more range in the Ford at 270 miles. And you will burn those miles at a very quick pace, thanks to sub 5 seconds 0 to 60s in both of these two. miles an hour yeah so this is uh, quite fast as most electric vehicles are these days um, so what we've got with this model here is going to be a 4.8 second 0 to 60 um, because we have the extended range and all-wheel drive um, that's the fastest combination that's currently available. And I say currently available because as you might know the there's going to be a GT version and the GT Performance Edition will go 3.5 seconds 0 yeah. 60 estimated by Ford when that comes out so that's going to be pretty insane uh, but you know 4.8 seconds 0 60 is still very fast. Next let's talk about our ride and handling characteristics. There's a pretty big divergence here because the Mustang roots start to come out and you can definitely feel the firm button down ride and precise handling. In this regard, the Mach-E is the better driver's vehicle. But for those of you who aren't concerned about that stuff, it's the Ionic that has the smoother and more comfortable ride on the highway. Alrighty, and you know, even though I'm in the driver's seat, I do want to go ahead and talk about my normal stuff, which would be like the ride quality for this Ionic 5, you know, just driving it here on the interstate, uh, we don't have the best, you know, loop to give you guys like city driving and all that. We're not from San Diego, you know, we're not very familiar with the area. So we're just going to be cruising here on the highway, which is a perfect example of just how well this vehicle rides. Um, you know, cruising here, it just, it really rides exceptionally well. I mean, we're just kind of going up and down on this bridge <laughs> right here and it is doing a fantastic job with the ride quality. You know, I... I yeah, comparing you know it to its main rivals like the Mach-E, I think this is probably more comfortable than that. And you can really tell. I mean, this is a this is a sporty SUV. <laughs> um, just like with the Model Y, um, this is definitely going to be on the sportier side of crossovers for sure. Um, you can tell that the suspension is you know pretty stiff. It's got a really nice control though when you go around corners and things like that. And especially, like I was saying, when you go into unbridled mode, you have the uh, steering that really firms up, gets uh, nice and tight and very fast responding. I also want to mention the sound level readings of these two on the highway. Now, we can't compare them directly this time because we were on very different road surfaces on opposite sides of the U.S. But here is the sample for you to hear anyways. We're going to go ahead and take a sound level reading at our usual 55. Of course, we're kind of on a rough concrete road, but we'll see how it turns Lots out. Lots of traffic around us. Well, we're trying our best here. Um, 61.4. And we're looking at 56 and a half decibels. Um, so that's a good reading. And, you know, obviously with an electric vehicle, you don't have an engine in the background, so. 
I will mention that the Mustang has some different sound effects, which is something a lot of people appreciate. And instead of fuel economy, let's wrap things up with charging. As expected, both utilize DC fast charging, and they can use pretty much the same network of public chargers from Electrify America and others. Speaking of Electrify America, the Ionic comes with unlimited charging at their stations for two years, which is a nice perk. As far as actual charge rates, the Ionic supports faster charging at 350 kilowatts versus the Mustang Mach-E's 150. According to the manufacturers, this would allow the Hyundai to achieve just under 70 miles of range in about half the time or 5 minutes faster than in the Ford. MSRP-wise, the Mach-E is $3,415 more expensive than the Ionic 5. And since both of them qualify for the full 7500 federal tax credit, that price difference will remain even if we apply that. As the rules dictate, this will give the Ionic a half point per thousand dollars of difference, or 1.5 points. And that's it everybody. This amazingly close comparison shows just how far rivals to Tesla have come in just the last couple years. These are undoubtedly two of the best EVs money can buy, and also two excellent and stylish family vehicles. You couldn't be faulted for going either way, so let us know in the comments below which one you would take. If you enjoyed or were helped by this video, we'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the channel and help us continue to make more comparisons and our signature full review videos. We appreciate your support, take care, and stay safe out there.